have you ever wondered how CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Target, etc., try and estimate how many people will come to their store each week? Well, a lot of stores use a model called the gravity model. You see it's called that because it's like the law of gravitational attraction between two bodies in physics. The way the gravity model works is you look at the attractiveness of the store to people in area I of, let's say, a city. I'm going to use east, downtown, and west of, let's say, Bloomington, Indiana. And the attractiveness of the store is based on the size of the store or how good a store it is. We'll just say the size of the store. Then you divide by the time it takes to travel from the area to the store. It's got to be the average time in that area of town. Squared. And the squared is like the formula for gravitational attraction has the distance between two objects squared. And it doesn't have to be squared, but let's keep it simple. So basically, the further people have to travel from an area of the town to your store, the less of them will come. And the bigger the store, more of them will come. And so this model provides, it turns out, a pretty good empirical fit to how people choose which store to go to. And is often used by stores like, again, Walgreens and CVS or Walmart and Target to try and figure out where to put their store to maximize how many people will come to their store. OK, so let's suppose there are 100 trips for people in the east part of Bloomington, Indiana make to a department store each week, 50 trips to downtown people make, and 70 trips to people in the west. And let's suppose the Walmart store is in the west and has a size of three, Target, <coughs> excuse me, in the east has a size of two. So Walmart's 50% bigger than Target. And here are the travel times. If you want to go from the east to Walmart, it's going to take a long time because Walmart's in the west. And it won't take long to go from the west to Walmart because Walmart's in the west. And Target's the opposite. Conversely, Target will take a long time to go to the west and not much to the east because it's in the east and downtown and sort of in the middle. OK, so what you need to do is figure out now the score for each store. OK, so we have the times here. Got trips here. Okay, so we might want to look at the score. Okay, so we could copy East Downtown and West. And then we might come up with a Walmart score, and then we can allocate the people the trips proportionally. Walmart score and a target score. Or Target's. Okay. Now the Walmart score. Okay, we should probably have something which is the Walmart size. Okay, so we're change here. And we'll have the Target size. So I think I said three and two. Okay, so the Walmart score. Let's see if we want to copy this. It's going to always take the Walmart size. So I would like to let that. Well, it's not going to copy very well because I didn't think that curve about how to set this up. We'll have to do the target size a little bit different. Then we'll divide by the distance from the east to Walmart squared. Now, that can copy down and across. Now, how do you square things? Carrot key over the six, like that. So that should be 3 divided by 25 squared. Small number. OK, but it doesn't matter because everything's relevant. OK, so for instance, that would be 3 divided by 4 squared. That's a much bigger number. Walmart has a much higher score for customers in the West than the East. Now, for Target, all I need to do is take the Target size, dollar sign, divided by the Target time squared. And Target has a higher score than the East. OK, so now we can figure out how many customers. See, building things up one step at a time really gets you where you want to go. Is it a Chinese proverb? A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Okay, so now I can copy this here. And then I can get Walmart trips. And I can get Target trips. Okay, now how is this going to work? Like from the east, you want to divide up 50 trips, right? OK, so you're going to take the total number of trips from people in the East Bank, which will be this cell. Now, you want to copy that across 
and not have the D change, but you're going to want the 13 to change. Because so when you go down here, you want this to be a 50. And then you're going to multiply it by the score that Walmart's got, divided by the sum of the scores in that row. See, Walmart is not going to do that well in the East. And then we should make sure that the Walmart trips and the target trips for each region add up to the total number of trips. So we'll see if that works. So there will be 5.66 I'm allowing fractions here. And target's going to uh, dominate in the East. Sorry, the East would be 100 trips there. So that would be D13. Ah, see what I forgot to do here? It's actually a good lesson. See, this has got to be dollar sign the D and dollar sign the E. Okay, I'm actually glad I made that mistake because it's a common mistake when I copied that across. We'll fix this in a minute. But see, that became E and F, which is totally wrong. Okay. Now, if I add those up, the total number of trips should be 100. Antarctic dominates in the east, but Walmart will get its just rewards in the west. Okay, now if I would copy this down, these two down and down, it should work out. Okay, in the Midtown region, or middle, there should be 50 trips, and then there should be 70 trips. So you can see Walmart crushes it on the west side, Target crushes it on the east side, and if I look at who's going to have more customers, it's probably going to be Walmart. And that may not be clear. Walmart got 106. Actually, it's going to be really about even. Even though Walmart had the bigger store there. Okay. Target gets slightly more people because there are more people living on the, more trips because there are more people living on the east side. So this is really a beautiful model. Because if I made Walmart a much bigger company store, made that a five, you can see Walmart would get more. Let's go back to the way we had it. But it's a really nice model that seems to empirically explain how people choose the stores they go to. Now, the two is sort of arbitrary. It seems to work out in a lot of situations. But you can actually use the Excel solver to solve for the uh, exponent here that fit the trip data the best. But this is, I think, an example of how powerful spreadsheets can be to model for model a complicated, important phenomenon, which is how people choose the stores at which they shop. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here and you can sort of see 4.5 or his newest book his analytic stories book which is here and with that one you can see it's four point something or maybe even five i don't think it's five yeah 4.8 and so yeah anyways in the description there's a free 21 day course from dr winston um or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free and it'll be there but again thanks for watching and if you have any questions just uh please let us know thanks